Spring break is almost here. And the seniors take their traditional retreat. Hello and welcome to KEHS. I'm Craig Choi. And I'm Steele Sassnett. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Night Vision News. With spring break just days away, students at EHS are anticipating the long time off. Lauren St. Paul went looking for answers as, as to how they plan on spending this time away. Hi, I'm Lauren St. Paul and I went around and asked members of our community what their plans for spring break were. Uh, working out, uh, sleeping in and just uh, having fun. Cabo <laughs> with two of my friends. Uh, for spring break, I'm going to Steamboat to go snowboarding with my dad. What am I doing for spring break? I am going to hang out with some friends that are coming up from Maine. I'm going to spend one day at South by Southwest um, going to their convention. And then I'm going to be um, working on a lot of projects for school for the spring awards, the spring awards season at EHS. I'm going to the Bahamas with my friends for the senior class trip, and we're going to swim with sharks. I'm going to the Bahamas with my brother for his like senior retreat thing. Looks like we have a lot of good plans. See you in the Bahamas. Thanks. Thanks, Lauren. The Houston rodeo is well underway, and nights have been hitting the concerts and midways in earnest. Galen Gray shares the story. Today I'm going to be going around and talking to people that are involved in the Houston Rodeo in the Episcopal community. Um, I'm in Junior Rodeo Committee and I started off because my mom is Vice Chairman of the Parade Committee and two others and what we do is we volunteer to raise money for the rodeo um, and things like at the parade early in the morning and directing people to things like the Helping Hands horse show with disabled kids. And this is my second year doing it. So, so I'm entering in my uh, fifth year of rodeo. Um, I've been on the committee now for, the committee that I'm on now for um, two years. Um, prior to that, I was on Rodeo Express, which handles all the transportation and such, and decided um, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So three years ago, I switched to the Auction and Receptions Committee, which handles um, all of the special events inside the NRG Center and um, the arena area. So we do everything from greeting guests that enter the party to you know, making sure all of the um, food and beverage is taken care of, so it's a great opportunity to really interact with all of the guests you know that come in for the parties at rodeo. Um, I moved to Houston about five years ago, so it was a really good opportunity for me to get exposed to um, a great event that Houston is known for. Uh, so my mom and dad are both a part of the rodeo. Uh, my mom is a past chairman of the International Committee and she's a director now. And my dad works on the Ranch and Wildlife Committee. Um, they've both been on it for since they were probably 21. And me and Serena both like going to the rodeo and enjoying the um, concerts and the carnival and stuff like that. You can go to the rodeo from any time now to the end of spring break. Back to you in the studio. Now we go to reporter Spencer Sheps who found out what the class of 2019 thought about the senior retreats. The annual senior retreat is a private event for each grade level. While the seniors are able to talk during mealtime and activities, it is mainly a time to reflect. This past weekend we went on the senior retreat. Uh, it was at Camp Allen. It was pretty cold. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We did the high ropes course and had some pretty mediocre meals. And then at night we slept in a cabin and then in the morning, we had some breakfast, and uh, we also did some skits that were pretty funny about like our time at Episcopal and, and then the future, and then we also got a letter from our parents that was pretty sweet. The retreat's main purpose for the seniors is to bond together by reflecting on the years past plus the years that lie ahead of them. The teachers were great, rooms were great, food was great, uh, the bonding was great with those people. I mean, people I've known since freshman year, you know. Great guys, great guys. This has been Spencer Sheps with KEHS News. Thanks, Jack. This week, my co-anchor, Steele Sasnet, put his story where his mouth is and cruised the cafeteria in a delicious examination of the food we are lucky to enjoy for lunch. Everyone's favorite time of day is lunch, and we just got a brand new cafeteria. 
and I'm here to get the details. I personally love the new cafeteria. The food is great, it looks amazing, but I also wanted to see what my classmates felt about it as well. I like the new pizza. I like that there's pizza every day. I like all the comfy chairs over there. Those are nice. And uh, I like there's more room and everything looks all modern. Um, I really like the fact that it's a really beautiful and big space. Our old cafeteria was very tiny, kind of old, and I like that this cafeteria really, um, that's what I'm looking for, really exudes kind of a community sense, and I really like that students can, can come here during their free periods, study, but also can just have a fun time, not just the library to hang out anymore, but I really like this space, really love the art gallery about it, I think that's really cool as a photographer, I really, really enjoy that, and it really helps me in my daily life. Also, I think the food is really awesome, it's nice to have the fries back. The food at the cafeteria is very good. It tastes very good. It looks very good. Everything is good about it. And also, the design. It's, it's modern, it's nice, it's chic, it's amazing. So lunches are good. They're healthy. Everyone likes them. And the fries are good. I like the food here because it's really diverse and there's something new every day. Overall, the cafeteria is a huge improvement and a great place to hang out. This is Steel Sassnet from KEHS News, and be sure to stop by the new cafeteria. It was interesting to learn about the new look cafeteria and what goes on behind the scenes during 5A and 5B lunches. The Knights had an exciting couple of days with the op with the opening of the Underwood Theater, let's go to Lily Masterson with the details. Last Friday was the opening of the Underwood Theater, and I know everyone had very positive reactions to the new addition. I think the new theater is really cool, and it's going to be really beneficial for all of our productions. And I think it just brings a neat aspect to the school. I think that the newest theater production was really cool, and that since the theater that was there and made in time that it brought a really neat aspect to the whole theater presentation in life. I love the new Underwood Theater. It has so many opportunities for people like myself to express my feelings and be a better actress. It is so lucky to have such a nice and beautiful theater with all of the tech I'm so happy I go to school that has the opportunity to build a new theater. We're so excited to see all the new productions in the Underwood Theater. I'm Lily Masterson for KHS News. Last week's spring musical marked the grand reopening of the space, and I think it's fair to say that all of the community was ready to get back in the theater. Thanks, Lily. Now we go to my co-anchor Craig Choi to look at the growing debate between Apple and Samsung. As Samsung's recent event has come to a close, new Samsung devices have been unveiled, causing users to question which phones are better, Apple or Samsung. Well, as a resident Samsung uh, expert, um, I feel that uh, Samsung's new products are pretty, pretty cool. Like the S10, the S10e, and the 5G version of those are um, looking to be very good phones for the money. Um, but of course, the real product there is the Samsung Fold. Um, and while it is a very thick phone and it doesn't actually like fold flat or anything, I think it is an intriguing look of how phones are going to evolve. And I mean, it's a good departure from the normal, you know, phone that just looks like a slab of glass or whatever. So um, I think it's way too expensive at $2,000 and I'm not going to buy it, but it's, uh, it looks like a good piece of technology. I also saw Huawei's Mate X, which is another foldable phone. It seems a lot thinner. It folds uh, differently. I believe it folds outwards instead of inwards. Um, but um, I think it's probably not going to be as high quality as Samsung, and it's higher price. So it's like $2,600, which is kind of crazy. I mean, you can buy a laptop for that price. Uh, so. I'm pretty excited about where uh, the future of phones are going, and um, I'm happy to see it evolve. Apple users then told us the features that they enjoy most on their phones. 
I like my iPhone because you can use Find My iPhone to find it if it gets lost and it has a really nice and big screen. Um, I like my phone because I really only use it for texting and calling people. It's very useful instead of trying to find a payphone or trying to find someone else to call to. So it's always nice to have instant communication with anyone wherever I go. Samsung users then did the same. Battery life is better and the screen quality is also better, so I don't have to worry about my phone breaking every time I drop it. Well, I love, this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 8. I really like it um, because of this. It's got a pen on it and I can basically sketch down notes super quickly. So if I have a thought or something, I can just sketch it down. It's also got a really nice screen and um, a great camera too. And it works great, so. That's all from me. Back to y'all in the studio. Golf, se golf season is now in full swing with one tournament in the books. Here's reporter Harrison Holmes finding out how the first outing went and what they look forward to down the road. What's up, Knights? This is Harrison Holmes with KEHS News, and I'm here today to give you an update on the guys' golf team. The first tournament went really well. We finished fourth out of eight teams, and the leading scores were Billy Hall with a 79 and Jack Pannis with an 82. Our next tournament we played just this past weekend was pretty rough because it was so cold and windy. But we ended up coming in fourth again, and the leading scorer was Jack Pannis with another 79. Team did pretty well. We had a few players go pretty low, but got a lot of improvement that needs to be done, and we're out for that SPC title this year. It was a good tournament. I mean, um, I had a few kids shoot pretty well, but I mean, I did the best out of everyone, and um, it was a great tournament. It was fun. Billy Hull also spoke to us about what he looks forward to going on in the season. I uh, look forward to uh, just competing against better players and uh, just getting better is my main goal. So. This has been Harrison Holmes of KHS Eats. Another spring sport, track and field, is enjoying a new season, and they are doing it on the new track that KHS brought you in our last broadcast. With word on the boys' and girls' ex expectations is reporter Julius Young. Today I talked to Coach Coleman, head of the track and field team, to ask him how things were going for the program midway through the season. Yeah. The track team is looking great this year. We're excited about the senior leadership, and we have a lot of young talent in the freshman and sophomore class, which is going to help us come time for SPC, which thankfully we're hosting here in our own backyard this May. This is Julius Young with KHS News. Well, that's all we have this week on Night Vision News. I'm Craig Choi. And I'm Steele Sassnett. From all of us at KEHS News, thank you for joining us. And, and go, go Knights! Knights.